High in the hills of the occupied West Bank, a flag flies in the face of a Palestinian village. God is king, it says. Two young settlers guard this illegal outpost. Construction hasn't even begun, but we are not welcome. So they are asking us to leave. They don't want to talk to us. They said they've been here for about nine months. Dotted across the landscape, more signs of the fight to assert Israeli control over Palestinian land. The Arabic names on signposts crudely erased. Under international law, the Beit Hagla settlement is illegal. But last February, the Israeli government officially recognized it along with eight others, a move the U.S. strongly opposed. We're here because God promised us this land, Azriel Picar tells us. Now these settlers have set their sights on a new prize, one that seemed utterly impossible before October 7th. Returning to Gaza, they cheer. That is the goal of Zionist settler organization Nahala, one of more than a dozen groups now advocating for the re-establishment of Israeli settlements in Gaza. A recent promotional video even boasts that Gaza will become the next Riviera. Daniela Weiss is the godmother of the movement. She's already started recruiting from the 700,000 strong settler community of Israel. We're just arriving now at a settlement in the occupied West Bank and we're heading to a talk that Daniela Weiss is giving to a group of people who are potentially interested in resettling Gaza. We are for the land of Israel and Ben Gavir, she says. About 20 people gather in the living room of a family home. Weiss knows that for many in this community, there is deep nostalgia for Gush Katif, a block of 21 Israeli settlements that were forcibly evacuated by the IDF in 2005 when Israel left the Gaza Strip. This is the vision of Gaza, she says. You see all the nucleus groups. A map has already been drawn up, with six groups laying claim to different parts of the enclave. So they've just been handing out these little booklets that say, people of Israel, return home, and then underneath, a call to return to the settlements of Gaza. One of the organizers tells the group they have a representative flying to Florida to raise money. Nahala gets support from a number of groups in the U.S., including AFSI, Americans for a Safe Israel, which co-sponsored a recent webinar on the return to Gush Katif, even as the Biden administration has cracked down on settlements in the West Bank. There is a very strong support mm -hmm. from very prominent, from very, uh, I would say, wealthy people, uh, wealthy Jews. In the U.S.? In the U.S. Can you name any names? No, I cannot. No. Back at her home in Kedumim settlement, Weiss tells us she's already enrolled 500 families. I even have on my, on my cell phone names of people who say, to, enlist me, enroll me, I want to join. I, I want to join the groups that are going to settle Gaza. I have to ask you, though, because we're sitting here talking and we're listening yeah, to the Yeah, call I'm listening to, to I, ho I hope you are listening to Which it. Which is a reminder, I think, of the people who live here, but yeah. also the people who live in Gaza. What happens to them okay. in this vision of this new settlement with Jewish settlers even in Gaza City? What I think about Gaza, the Arabs of Gaza lost the right to be in Gaza on the 7th of October. Yes, I do hear the mosque, I do hear the, 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 the prayer. Things were different until the 7th of October. No Arab, I'm speaking about more than two million Arabs. Mm -hmm. They will not stay there. We, Jews, will be in Gaza. That sounds like ethnic cleansing. Okay. <laughs> the Arabs want to annihilate the state of Israel. So you can call them monsters. You can, uh, you can call, their, uh, call them cleansing of Jews. We are not doing to them. They are doing to us. I couldn't make it clearer when I said that myself, as a person who is preoccupied with settling the land until the 7th of October, 
I didn't have plans of returning to Gaza. It's clear, I'm mm. not interested in cleansing. What is clear is that Weiss's views, traditionally seen as extreme in Israel, have become more popular since October 7th. In late January, jubilant crowds packed an auditorium in Jerusalem for the Victory of Israel conference, calling for the resettlement of Gaza. A poll that month from the Jewish People Policy Institute found that 26 percent of Israelis advocate the reconstruction of the Gush Katif settlements after the war is over. Among supporters of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing coalition government, that number jumps to 51 percent. Several ministers were present at the conference, including far-right heritage minister Amahai Eliyahu. In a rare interview with Western media, he tells us his political decisions are guided by the Torah. Is there anything about Gush Katif in here? Yes. Yes. And that settlements in Gaza are needed to prevent another October 7th. The language of the land says that wherever there is a Jewish settlement, there will be more security. Doesn't mean there will be absolute security, but there will be more security. Why would you advocate for something that many would say is illegal, is immoral, is not supported by the majority of Israelis, and is also very harmful to Israel in terms of its international standing? Why do you think it's immoral to take land from someone who wants to kill me? Why is it immoral to take my land which my ancestors live there, which I've even given up to someone who slaughters, rapes, and murders me. What is more immoral than that? Netanyahu has called resettling Gaza, quote, an unrealistic goal, and most Israelis agree. But that hasn't stopped scores of IDF soldiers fighting there from posting videos, calling for a return to Gush Katif. For many supporters of the settler movement, what was once a distant fantasy is now a fervent dream. Clarissa Ward, CNN, the Occupied West Bank.